the 9th of November 1993. It's the big breakfast once again on Channel 4. Hello. I'm Anne Kimwell, standing in for Gabby Roslin. She's here for day two. She's doing a fantastic <laughs> job. Yeah. Uh, today on the show, as well as Kim Wilde, we have the wild man of soul, Lenny Henry, singing. Oliver Stone and James Belushi talk about their TV show, Wild Farms, and more wild things with Zig and Zag when they meet the footballer, the ace footballer, Les Ferdinand. Wow. Plus, you could win a week's skiing holiday in St Anton in our competition at the Richard Bryars is on the bed with Paula, Ooh. and I'll be talking to the real Colonel Mustard. It's all coming up and other stuff on the show between now and nine, but today it's a foggy day here at the Big Breakfast. Come on, Kim. Breathe. There you are. And uh, not only did we all get completely lost on the way here, but everyone's been getting lost in the mist around the house all morning, yeah. which yeah. means there could be chaos today, so chaos. stay tuned. Uh, Val, the floor manager, for example, is somewhere out on the towpath. <laughs> There he is, wandering around. Not a clue. Not a clue where he is. And the last time I saw Toby, the assistant floor manager, uh, he was stumbling around the front garden. <laughs> He's still stumbling around the front garden. It's too foggy here. And our trusty number one cameraman, only joking, John, Sean, uh, who knows the house like the back of his hand, honestly, it's true, should have been doing this shot, in fact, the shot that you're looking at, but he's completely lost somewhere else. Where, where are, are you, Sean? Sean? <laughs> Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Look, there's no fog around here. Oh. And what are these pillows doing on the floor? No, no, oh, no. any pillows? No. You're pathetic, you are, Sean. What's next, Kim? Well, 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 I don't know. Is Chris. it the news, do you think? Oh, it might be the news of Peter Smith. <laughs> That's right, yeah. <laughs> You're on. Pardon? What? You're on, it's you, Q. <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we were just discussing whether we were on or not. Thanks, oh, Peter. Well. And Glad apparently, viewers, we are on. Um, <laughs> And we were just preparing a very funny joke for you, so honestly, that was the reason we weren't consecrating. <laughs> it's five past seven now, and uh, time for uh, the show. Uh, yeah. So, morning to the girls, morning girls. Morning! And morning to the boys, morning boys. Morning! It's good that we got a cue from the floor staff, though, isn't it? Uh, right, yes, yeah, so, on with the show. As I say, birthdays. Uh, happy birthday to Catherine Hepburn. There she is, star of The African Queen. 84 today, still going strong. Well done, Cathy girl. Happy birthday! Happy birthday to Peppa, who is from? Well, that's right. And how old is she, Kim? Oh, you know? She's uh, 24. You're cheating. You're oh, looking. I'm a You're script. It. Happy birthday to Andy Kershaw, who says Andy here, Kershaw. it says here, famous for being Liz Kershaw's brother. <laughs> uh, it used to be the other way around, but now suddenly it is that way around, Andy, if you're watching. Oh. And you're 34 <laughs> years old today. And there he is, the Incredible Hulk. Lee Farino is 42 years old today. Do you remember Lee Farina, the Incredible Hulk? Yeah. Yeah. Well, somebody here remembers him with fond affection <laughs> and uh, has got a special tribute to him, actually. And it's Jonathan, who, who bears an uncanny resemblance to Lee. Yes, That's he does. Ah, don't make me angry, you <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you, Jonathan. Jonathan, you know what they say about monsters, don't you? Better do. Yes, all right. Then. <laughs> Sorry, private joke, viewers. Uh, and if it's your birthday today, call us now on phone us on 081 985 Fax us on 081 985 The mystique of television revealed as he gets undressed. <laughs> it's a life jacket, but remember, don't inflate them before leaving the plane. <laughs> Now, what else is coming up on the show? We go to page six now. And on today's show, the automatic toilet seat on Invention Corner. Ooh. Ooh. There it is, you see? Isn't it lovely to hear that on a Tuesday? Zig and Zach kick a few balls around with Les Ferdinand. <coughs> and Paula will be asking Richard Bryce about Felicity Kendall's body. Plus, Oliver Stone and James Belushi talk about their new TV series, Wild Palms. And can we just say... How lovely Kim looks today. We what a yeah. lovely yeah. pop that is. Great. Whoa. She's plain, but hey, you can't buy style. You can only buy fashion. And Kim's got style. It's 7.07 now. And time on the uh, Tuesday, the second day for the family, to meet the family. Good morning. And here they are, the Kenny family from Norris Green in Liverpool. I'm here with Joe, the daddy for family of the week, and he's about to tell me a little bit more about being a Mormon. Uh, gossip in the middle of the night, I think it was just a bit uncomfortable. Mm. Just twist around for a bit and then um, call for a little gossip and labour. Which can you talk? Not me. 
The Mormon missionaries came out and yeah. they, they invited them in our home and we spoke about um, the discussion that they gave. And they convinced you how? Well, it was the, it was the family values that they teach. Joe, I'm having a baby now, Joe, now, yeah. Joe, now. So he said, no, I'll go for the change. I know the guy that came to pop in the table. So many three people out? Yes. Yeah. Why is that? <laughs> Breakfast television can't afford to pay for it. No. We talked about looking after your body. Well, I've got problems with my other moments and it's weird. No. Too late. You're gorgeous, <laughs> shut up. So isn't that romantic? You're gonna have your honeymoon, you're gonna get your ring, you're gonna get everything. Oh no. <laughs> and it's a really big welcome to this week's family, the Kennys from Liverpool. Hi right. there. Right. Anyway, <laughs> Christine, at the end of that video we saw Joe presenting you with an engagement ring. Wasn't that romantic? Yeah, Guys, have a closer look. Quick closer look at Christine's engagement oh, ring. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's so beautiful and you're so romantic you know, after all these years. Yeah, going back next Monday, that. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, let's talk about this musical family of yours. Now, you're quite musical and between you, you play the flute, the keyboards and the trumpet. But Daniel... You're the one in the family that has the really musical ear, That's don't right. you? That's right. So, what do you play? Um, I can play a tune, Bar Bar Black Sheep. But what do you play on? The ear. You play it on the ear? Yes. On your ears? Yes, that's right. Okay, and how did you discover that you could do this? I, I was um, leaning against my ear and yes. it made a funny squeak. It made up for this week. So uh, can you make noises from any other parts of your body? Then? No, unfortunately uh -huh. not. And does anybody else have this talent in the family? They no. No? No. Uh, not you. Well, occasionally Elizabeth does, doesn't she? Okay, let's do a tune first then. Little tune. Tune. Wow. Whoa. 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 Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. And uh, what was that tune supposed to be? It's supposed to be part of our black sheep. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Very good. Well, that was very good. Anyway, now it is ten past seven, and more Dick Dastardly and Fender Bender 500. Uh, Manna Wood in Middlesbrough, who is 43. Happy birthday, Jo. Happy birthday! And uh, she's getting this message for her birthday, and that's about it. Uh, that's from <laughs> Andrew Barsfield. Thank you. If you were in the dip and you didn't get pulled out, maybe next year. <laughs> but will we be here next year? That's the whole thing, isn't it? Oh. Yeah. We, we certainly hope so. Uh, right, so that's for today's question of the day now. Thank you, Ronnie. Uh, now, today's question of the day. Uh, the organisers of a spot the ball competition in uh, uh, Clummel in Ireland forgot to take the ball out of the picture. Oh, no. Yes, it's true. But still, hundreds of people who entered got the wrong position. No. So our question of the day is... Question of the day! <laughs> Thank you, Ted. Is, uh, what's the most idiotic mistake you've ever made? And I believe that Ms. Wilde has mm. one. Well, I, was, I used to be a barmaid when I was at art college, and I charged this very heavy sort of leather girl 480 quid for a four pound 80 round. Oh, really? I mean, yeah. That was quite idiotic, wasn't it? It was. Was she pleased? No, she wasn't. Oh, blimey. She scared me. <laughs> and anyway, the telephone number 081 985 081 7272. What's the most idiotic mistake you've ever made? Okay, now if that leather clad girl is watching, you just better leave my chem alone, otherwise I'll have me to toot with. Okay, we have a question about the clip now. Oh, yeah, and the question of, of the quip. <laughs> the quip. The quip of the quip. Hello. Um, name this com comedian and remember don't, don't phone it, it's just for fun. fun. Well, I didn't apply for this. Some nosy Parker been interfering? I applied for it. Oh, you did? Oh. <coughs> oh, thank you very much, Mabel. But I say £75 a year is ridiculous. Do they know who they're writing to? They can't do, or they wouldn't have offered so much. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Well, allow me to inform you that... <laughs> and the question about the clip was, name that comedian, and it was Will Hay, and that was a clip from Convict 99, Vintage British Comedy on Channel yeah. 4 today well, at 2 p.m. Now, look, Kim always gets the shakes till about half seven. After that, she's fine. All right, then, that's all we want to say. We don't know why, it's just a fact of life, isn't it, Kim? <laughs> yes. 
by the end of the yesterday show, she's like this. Hi, guys, how are you? <laughs> We're just doing it. <laughs> OK, uh, time to play the washing line game now. Whose washing line is it anyway? Well, all week, we're giving away this fantastic CD player, which also acts as a projector because you can show photographs on it. Yes, it's Ooh, true. Yeah, if you didn't see it yesterday, I can show it to you again now. I'll just put it on Channel oh. 4. Because uh, Channel 4... Oh, there it is. There's Sean. <laughs> and uh, you can put lots of pictures on this because... Uh, oh, there's another one of Sean. <laughs> and uh, what else have we got? Picture number three today. Oh, by the way, it's Sean. So if you want to win that thing without the Sean stuff, you can put your photographs on the CD. All you've got to do is play our washing line game. And telephone us on 0891 <laughs> And course you cost no more than 25 p. That's right, you've got to guess whose washing line is it anyway. Uh, still to come, we've got Zig and Zag. They're meeting top footballer Les Ferdinand in the bathroom. But now... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> look, you do. You know you do. Come on, think. No, don't look. Oh, I think it's the news of Peter. Yes, Yay! Yay! <laughs> That's the OK, thanks, Peter. And here, um, he'll be back with the news in within about 20 minutes. And now the question of the day is, do, 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 what is the most idiotic mistake you've ever made? So, Christine, what's the most idiotic thing you've ever done? Um, when the clocks went back, a couple of weeks back, yes. I actually put them forward. So all the family got up at about oh, half past no. six. <laughs> And the silliest thing I've done is wash my contact lenses in fairy liquid, and that's from Jack Dobson in Hull. Yeah, nice. But now it's to the bathroom for the crunches they can sag. It'll Never Work brings you world-shattering inventions. Inventions like Thomas Crapper's Victorian toilet system. But, Mr Crapper, eat your heart out, because we take toilet technology one step further. It's 7.40. Welcome back to the Big Breakfast. <laughs> Is that mine, John? Yeah. Thank you very much, Elise. Uh, the question about the clip was, um, who invented the Victorian toilet systems? And the answer is Thomas, Crap Thomas Crapper. And that's <laughs> it's true. Crapper. It is true, isn't it? <laughs> And that was a clip uh, from a brilliant new show called It'll Never Work. Starts today on BBC One at 4.35. And talking of toilets, we take toilet technology to, yes, to, Stages further in Invention Corner. Oh. Invention Corner. Invention Corner. Coming up, girls, you will love that invention, I promise you. Stay around for that. <laughs> OK, and still to come, Richard Briars has a good life when he gets on the bed with Paula. Oh, well, and hey. in the next 20 minutes, James Belushi and the McLaren Formula One story in Snap, Cackle and Pop. Ooh. But now, at 7.41, it's time to go to Peter Smith with for the big breakfast news and the weather. <laughs> In the tropic of cancer, did you? Well, no, not quite. Just but everywhere in Britain, I did. But. Oh, okay, just a bit of a generalisation. I just get me on back for earlier. If you didn't see it, never mind. <laughs> it's 18 minutes to eight. Uh, time for today's question of the day. <laughs> Thanks, Ted. Kim accompanying there. And today's question of the day is: What's the most idiotic thing you've ever done? And uh, Stan Zalix, what a name, uh, from Chingford, says the most idiotic thing he's ever done is: as the father of the bride, I proposed a toast to Marilyn and Barry. But Barry was her last boyfriend. Oh! She just Very married boy. Rob. What a nightmare. Oh, He's a bed for from Abba Galani. He says the most idiotic thing I've done was when my wife asked me to buy pet mint and I bought five pounds of mint imperial. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Give us a call. 081 oh, 985 double one double one or faxes. Thanks on 081 985 double two double two. Kate, we'd love to hear from you. <laughs> <laughs> and now, it, look, it's 743. Time rolls on, and so does the show. It's time to shout out for the first time today on this misty morning. Where are you, kids? Of the Kenny family, Joanne, Lizzie, and Christine. So, Christine, here she is. What's it like being the youngest in the family? How old are you, by the way? Eight. Eight. And what's it like being the youngest in the family? Horrible. It's horrible. Why'd you get <laughs> why do you get bossed about a lot? Yeah. And uh, is it right that you all share the same bedroom? Yeah. You do? Yeah. Nightmare. <laughs> so uh, so what happens on the walls? You know, I mean you get take that. Yeah. 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 And, and you get Mickey Mouse. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, like, you know, what happens to the you know, competing on the space on the walls with the pop stars? We all take that until it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, and you all and you all get along quite well. Yes. Yeah. And it's all no, fine. No, I don't really get along with her, but I get along. With her. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you get along with Christine? She's just a horror. <laughs> oh, that's not fair. So, what about your brothers? I mean, they're real horrors, aren't they? Yeah. Daniel, Danny, and John. Yeah, I get along with them, but like, it can be a bit difficult. 
Yeah, especially, especially that John, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the Kellogg cornflakes flicker. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to... Um, yesterday, your dad actually told us about you belonging to the Mormon church. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. So, Joanne, have you all been baptised into the Mormon religion? Yeah, we have when we were eight. eight and, that's, we were and that's the most common age, is it? Yeah. yeah. Why, why eight years old? Is what's happened to um, you? You're supposed you can responsible for your sins. Yeah, you're you're responsible for your sins at eight years old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not responsible for mine, and I'm 33. <laughs> so do you like do you like being Mormons? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can never talk to you that, but it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> and who who baptised you? Um, my dad, dad. My dad baptised yeah. us all, I think, yeah. yeah so your yeah. dad actually baptised you? Yeah. Yeah. At the school. Wow, so when you all get older, you want to become missionaries, is that right? We're thinking about it. We're thinking about, about it. it. Yeah. Dad, our daddy's our definitely going there. Yeah. 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 So, so what would you do if you became a missionary? What happens then? Like, yeah, you preach the gospel in another country, like, sort of thing. Two for two years, and you split from your family. And you have no contact. Except by letters. Do you have by no letters. contact with your family at all? No, except by except letters. Except by letters, you can contact them by letters. I see. OK, well, thanks so much, Yul. Thanks for talking to me about your faith. And now it's time for the latest TV news and Snap, Cackle and Pop. Snap, Cackle, Pop. TV news. What about the music programmes at the end? And uh, I was doing the Death 2 stuff. Did you see the programme on Sunday when we had our election day? I was asleep then, did I think. Oh, I was in Tesco's. Yeah. All right. Well, it was on Bite Back, and they did a report on the BBC's Bite Back programme mm. on Death 2. Yeah. And uh, they said that 14% of the people it was aimed at watched the programme, which are 14 to 25-year-olds, right? Mm. But that was equalled by over 65s. 14% of over 65s <laughs> watch Deaf 2. Dance Energy. Yeah, they watch Dance Energy in Normski. That must be brilliant. <laughs> if that's one of your grandmas, then let us know. We want her on this show. I want to go out with her on a Saturday night. All righty. It's 7.56. Still to come. And still to come today, the world Cluedo champ, and his real name is Colonel Mustard. No. Really? And win a skiing holiday for two in our competition you're at their peak. You're and it's just three minutes from now. Find out what the crew really want to do for a living. But remember, we've got to go, because if we don't go, we can't come back. Good morning! Oh, it's the Big Brips and the Terrible Three are here, the uh, oh, yeah. Trouble Threesome. Uh, I'm Chris Evans on this uh, Tuesday, the 9th of November, 1993. And I'm Kim Wells, standing in for Gabby Wilson while she's on holiday. Yeah. And I'm Polly Yates, and later on I'm going to be talking to gorgeous Richard Briers about Felicity Kendall's bottom. Ooh. Ooh. And then I'm going to be outside yet again, that's why I'm wearing this, uh, with the plant doctor, and he's going to be showing me his bulbs. Pardon? His bulbs. That's good. All right, I'll be relaxing <laughs> in a £5,000 flotation tank, and you can win a skiing holiday in At Their Peak. Yeah. Yeah. I meet the real Colonel Mustard and Zig and Zag go TV shopping. That's right. Now, Kim, mm -hmm. I've got a note for you here from the producer. Because you've made a smooth transmission uh, from Transi top... Transmission, <laughs> maybe? What? Transition. Well, it was to do with broadcasting, so I thought I'd sort of change it. Yeah, yeah right. Right. <laughs> From top pop star to a uh, top TV presenter. She's a top TV presenter oh, yeah. after just two days. And you've given our crew ideas uh, about their career changes as well. You've rocked the boat, Kim, to be quite honest. Yeah, some are even talking about leaving here for greener pastures elsewhere. Why not? Well, no, you can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to get them here. But look, let's take a look at who's around the house this morning and what they're thinking of doing. I want to be a cowboy. I want to be a shallow girl. I want to be Hulk Hogan. I want to be Naomi Campbell. I want to be a cameraman. Sean, 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 you are a cameraman, mate. Yes, I am, Chris, but that's because I am, and I like it. <laughs> you believe that? <laughs> you believe that, like, did you completely? OK. You, you, you'll never know what the joke was, viewers, but here's the news now and the weather with Peter. <laughs>
I giggled because I got the time wrong. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's nice when you can giggle at that, though, isn't it? <laughs> it's five past eight. It's the 9th of November, 1993. It's the Big Breakfast here on Channel 4. Yeah. Viewers, yeah. thanks once again for joining us. Here we have the first standing lady of television. Yes? Yeah. <laughs> Kim Wilder is with us all week. Kim Wilder is here now. Uh, let's have a look at the paper, shall we? And once again, as you hear in the news, the Diana photo story is dominating all the front pages. The Sun says, die banned, sneaky mirror photos. Oh, yes, they do. And also tells us about uh, the mirror advertisers who are considering pulling out of advertising with the newspaper at their disgust. Uh, the RAC are thinking about pulling out. Autoglass are thinking about pulling out. And the Britannia Building Society are all thinking about pulling their advertising. And uh, then if you go inside, it uh, tells us that Reebok... Who, uh, whose uh, trainers Di was wearing in the photographs, do not want to cash in on this at all. They don't want to be associated with it, so well done, Reebok. They're not going to exploit the photographs for advertising. And then the Sun points out the people who are involved with the Mirror, who are also disgusted with the Mirror. The former editor of the Mirror, Roy Gleans Greenslade, says uh, boycotts the paper, the bo paper that he loves. And Diamond, who's a columnist for the paper, said it was a gross intrusion. It's all happening in the Daily Mail. Diana fights for damages. She's going to fight to the end. There are over a million pounds of the damages. And then the Mail has this photograph here, or this cartoon, rather. Um, this is a meeting at the Daily Mirror, supposedly a meeting yesterday. And Robert Maxwell's ghost appears and says, What are you idiots trying to do? Ruin the paper's reputation? <laughs> <laughs> okay, in the Daily Mirror itself, and boy, oh boy, are they ruining the day that they printed those photographs, in my opinion. <laughs> Diana puts the boot in. And here we have another photograph of Diana. And now, of course, they're not allowed to print anymore because she's got an injunction on the photographs. This isn't Diana. This is a lookalike. Oh, no. Yeah, so they've gone another step further. They just won't learn their lesson, <laughs> will they? Because they say here, they say here, halfway down their editorial, before yesterday's court hearing, the Daily Mirror, on hearing of Di's distress, had already agreed not to publish any more photos. So the Daily Mirror are trying to make out from that sentence, this is what I gleaned, that they care about her feelings, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, because right. they heard about her distress, so they don't want to print any more photos. So they get a look in, uh, they get a stand in, all right. And then, if they don't want to hear about her distress, then why did they print this then, this headline? Work out with Diana. And <laughs> uh, why did they print this? Win her gym kit if they don't want to hurt her distress. They just won't learn, will they? That's another 500,000 in the lawsuit, I should imagine. <laughs> and the Today newspaper says, it's trash. The Daily Mail, this is... Um, but in fact, it's not the, the Today newspaper that say this. This is the wife of the chairman of Mirror Group newspapers. The Today newspaper yesterday asked this lady uh, whether or not uh, she'd read the Daily Mirror yesterday. She said, no, I don't read it, it's trash. Now, this is the wife of the guy who's the chairman of the Mirror Group newspapers. They then said, have you ever read it? She said, no, I've never read my husband's newspaper. <laughs> well, there you are. What's that? Oh, and then to change the subject, uh, on page three oh, here, oh. Uh, this here is, is, is a lovely lady in the winter clothing, yeah? But yeah. it's not, it's one of those body paintings. They're fantastic, aren't That's they, those body paintings? <laughs> and Kim, you didn't know this, but on Thursday, we're gonna get you to, to have a body painting done. <laughs> and uh, I actually can't tell you what we're gonna get you to uh, have painted on you, but it's very interesting. Is, is, it, is it all right with you? It's fine. Hey, it's yeah. fine. Yeah. Okay, have we got time for today's question of the day? Yeah. Okay, today's question of the day is, what's the most idiotic mistake you've ever made? Oh, okay, well, the most... You are asking me to read the facts on it. Yeah, not here. Um, uh, okay, and Andy Cyprian from Runcorn, um, he says, I made a huge mistake on Valentine's Day last year by sending my two girlfriends the wrong card. Oh, no! And Ross Walker from Derby said, the most idiotic thing I've done is give my baby daughter a kiss after she had just eaten up her mashed up peas and it was all stuck in her mouth. It was disgusting. <laughs> Anyway, more of those, please. <laughs> yes, on our phone number 081985 or faxes 081985 But now it's time to play our game once again. It's at their peak. Uh, spot a mystery celebrity and win a skiing holiday. That's right, Kim, you've got to win a skiing holiday. And all you have to do is spot the celebrity. Uh, we say that the mind boggles as we ask, who is behind the goggles? Hot, 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 hot
Is that right? That is absolutely correct. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> and uh, so tell me, um, what makes you the world Kudo champion? What are your best skills? Well, it's a case of deduction. You have to work out what's in the, the, the murder mystery card envelope. No ideas what they are. And, of course, you have to um, usually power the deduction to work out what um, everybody else has to eliminate the other cards. Oh, I see. So, so what's your name? Me? Mm. Well, some people call me Joseph Collar, but I'm really Colonel Mustard. You're really Colonel Mustard? Oh, but changed it by deed poll. <laughs> so why on earth did you change it to deed by deed poll? Well, if you're going to do the part, do it right. After all, I had to prove a, a connection to one of the characters on the Cluedo board. So Colonel Mustard married Mrs. White's daughter, yeah. formed Mustard White as a surname, and uh, Mustard White over the years became the surname, which is, on my mother's side, a genuine relationship. So I take it for that that Colonel Mustard is your favourite character? Certainly not. No. Miss, no. <laughs> Miss, oh. Miss Scarlet is, but I'd look a bit dark in a red dress, wouldn't I? I don't know. <laughs> I think you could look quite fetching in a red dress. Oh, well. But you look great like, anyway like that. Fine. So what did you have to do to win the World Cluedo Championships? Play two games of Cluedo. Um, I also had to solve um, a murder mystery. Mm -hmm. and, and what did you win? And, oh, $10,000 prize, which is um, trip to Hollywood, limousine transportation, walk-on partner movie. Lo oh, really? Walk-on oh, yeah. partner movie? Oh, yeah. What yeah. movie? Oh, that's to be decided. Oh, really? Isn't that great? And you, and you won this as well? Oh, yes, yes, and the Tiffany, uh, Tiffany Prize as well, which is um, sterling silver, as you can see. Cool. So, um, do you think you could do a little bit of your act? Because you have to sort of play in your costume, don't you? So yeah, yeah, that's can right. Can you yeah. do a mm. bit of your Colonel, is it mustard? It's Colonel mustard, yes. yes I'll, mustard I'll show you how we play the game. Playing. Right, yes, we <laughs> shake the dice. Yes. Two, well, that'll do. I'll go into there. I'll look at my cards. Um, you've got your cards there. In case oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. Um, <laughs> I suspect it might have been uh, Miss Scarlet in the library with a spanner. Do you have any of those cards? I don't think I do. Oh, well, in that case, I think I know it. I, I accuse Colonel <laughs> Mustard in the kitchen with the lead pipe. Let's have a quick look. Look at that, I've won. Oh, cool. <laughs> so, listen, I won't, pretend, I won't pretend I haven't really understood that, but Doesn't tell me, what do, you, what do you do for a living? I'm an accountant. You're an accountant? <laughs> so what do all your mates think of that? Oh, that's all right. They thought I was a prat before. Now they know I am. Oh, no, that's not true at all. Oh, well, anyway, it's been really lovely talking to you, and congratulations for being such a champ. Thank yeah. you very much. But yeah. now, what does Michael do for a living? But remember, don't yeah. phone in. It's just for fun. Oh, my God. I can't go to the rainbow room with my hair like this. Ask for Kenneth. He does Havana. I can't feel like a pro. How'd you know? I'm the concierge. I know everything. Hello. And the question Hello. about the clip was, what does Michael do for a living? And he's a concierge. And the concierge is on general release next next week. That's right. Michael J. Fox's <laughs> brand new film. Uh, look, welcome back. On the day that a very special thing's happening, because we can reveal that kissing is very good for your teeth, Kim. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. Is this a coincidence? <laughs> or have you just had your lipstick done? Because <laughs> you've just got a lipstick done. I've just realised this now. Because you see, Kim, no. it says here Chris. that a, you put the lipstick on, not me. It's just a, a routine makeup check. Chris. Okay. That glistening, I can't look at that. <laughs> Close up on 12. <laughs> John, look at that. Oh, Whoa. yes. Okay. <laughs> now, a study by the American um, Academy of General Dentistry says kissing helps prevent teeth from rotting. No. Because no. extra wow. saliva produces calcium. No. That builds up enamel, which puts a stop to tooth decay. No. Fabulous. Right. <laughs> it's uh, it's 8.19 and time for the news and weather. Whew. With Peter. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, today's question of the day. <laughs> is what's the most idiotic mistake you've ever made? Well, ours is that one, now yours. <laughs> Sarah Bernard from Kensington, is, uh, the most idiotic thing I've ever done is put my head out of the car window while it was still wound up. Bit stupid, <laughs> no, 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 no. bump on the head. And Martin Dobbin from Nottingham <laughs> says, the most idiotic thing I've ever done, I lit an oil lamp while a petrol tanker was unloading at a garage. Stupid done. boy. 
Tim, there's more calls, please. What's the most idiotic thing you've ever done? Or you can phone and ask how much I enjoyed that. 0819851122. All factors 0819852222. And the answer is volumes. Uh, now, it's your chance to take a second glance uh, because the star you seek will be at their peak. As once again, we're trying to give away a holiday to St. Anton in Austria as we ask. The mind boggles who's behind the goggles. How long did she want that girl? Oh, eight, nine, one, double three, double three, double one. Of course, it cost them more than 25p. If you think you know who that was, a very, very famous celebrity, you can either give us a real name or the name of the character that she plays in Zivel Nun sitcom. Yeah. Uh, hello, hello, hello. Now, look, I've got here um, the Sun Newspaper's uh, weekly TV guide, and this is published last Saturday. And, of course, there are whole days, you know, the whole seven days. But on it, Channel 4 programmes look amazingly similar to those on BBC Two. John, could you get in close and show that? There's BBC Two and Channel 4 together, and they are, in fact, la meme. They are the same. They are one. Uh, so according to The Sun, you Channel 4 viewers now should be uh, seeing something called Cameron Country. Now, we didn't want you to miss out, so let's go over to BBC Two now and see what Cameron Country's like. Oh, I'm that clevish McDowell. Lost a million viewers to uh, BBC <laughs> Two. It's 8:23 now, and time to shout out for the last time today. Where are you, Keith? Oh, thanks, Keith. Hello. And still to come, a surprise on the bed with Paula. Now oh. I'm here with Joe. Oh, yeah. Joe is oh, talking just... data this week's family of the week, and you're, you're going to talk about your livelihood, aren't you? Yes. So, Joe, what do you do for a living? I'm a street trader. A street trader. <laughs> <laughs> a street trader. And what, what sort of thing? It slipped out of my hand! You big dick! Behave! Behave! Joe, what sort of work is do you sell? Um, we sell clothes and uh, underwear and things like that, jogging bottoms and stuff like that. So stuff like this? Stuff like this, just Lovely. like just, okay. just like this. And how long have you been a street trader for, Joe? Oh, about eight or nine years now. Yeah, and you always got the same spot? Oh, uh, we do, yeah. Okay, yeah. so yeah. we're all... <laughs> So with all those years of experience, you must have some hot tips to pass on to two buddy oh, street what? traders. Zig. That Zig. is oh, my Zig. It's the Zig. It's the Zig. Zig is doing her very utmost best, and you're spoiling the whole game. Yeah, you're just like that John downstairs. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Very naughty. Yeah. No, listen. <laughs> Kim, <laughs> you're going to give the guys a few tips. Yes, I'm going to give a couple of tips. Yeah, yeah so I'd, I'd like to know how do you I get can. all the attention? How do you get people to kind of come round to your store and stuff? Right. Well, what you must do is you must. You, first of all, you must try and get people's attention. Yeah. And then you must uh, build a sale. Right. Okay. And the build third the thing sale. you must do is go for the kill. The fourth thing oh, you, you must kill them then. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh. Unless they're like these, they're already dead. Well, oh. The fourth thing you must remember yeah. Yeah. is the price. And you start high and bring it down low. Down low. So that's all you got to remember. I remember that. Will you? Yeah. So Joe, Joe, it's there. <laughs> Joe, Joe. It's Joe. Pardon? Yes, Sag. Joe, yes. tell me this. I suppose you always tell people the price right away. No, no. The right away. No, Keep no. them interested. No, no, you mustn't do Zig. that. You mustn't do that. Behave yourself, will you? Whoa. Calm down. Ow! Get off! Somebody hit me! No. Oh. <laughs> Well, someone's throwing food at me and it's not Take fair because I'm on the ghetto! The whole thrust of this interview! Yes. Pardon. Sorry about this, Kim. I really apologise. I'm talking to the good looking one of the family okay, here. Okay, pardon. Yes. So, Joe, just wondering, do you tell them the price straight away? No, no, you mustn't do that. No, why Keep not? it till the end. Well, well, like Keep people excited and get them, get them ready for the, for the big really? sale. Really? For the kill. What's the hardest thing you've ever tried to sell? Um, well, there's been loads of things, Never. but recently we do... Zing! Show us how to do it. Well, the, the last thing we, um, we sold was sparklers, but what we're going to yeah, do today yeah. is let me show you quickly, okay? What we've got here is one of the finest bargains this side of Christmas. Oh, now, this, yes. is, this is what all the best, oh, the yes. best oh, men and women oh, are selling. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, they are. Now, 
let me show you this, okay? There they are. The oh, finest, they're disgusting. The finest undergarments they're you're going to get this side of Christmas. Disgusting. Now then, listen. Disgusting. Just feel the quality yeah. of that. Are your hands being clean? Yeah. Go, get up, get up. Twice. Zig, buy them. Now we're going to start with £10. Pounds. Ten, well, ten, ten, pounds. ten pounds. Five pounds. No. Four. Three. Twenty. Three. Three. Twenty pounds. <laughs> Twenty pounds. <laughs> Thirty. No, that's our stuff. Thirty pounds. Zig. Yeah. Joe, thank you. Forty. Zig. Yeah. Good. Thanks for your hot tips. They were very interesting. Six, it's not it's not yes, well but now it's time for At Their Peak and the mind boggles. Who's behind those goggles? Zig, you ruined that whole thing. Do you really think that you are ironic? Ironic. Ironic. He believes in the British Empire, you know. We all do in my family. That's why I volunteered to help keep the Empire together. Yeah? Well, I volunteered because there's a depression back home and I got a wife and kid. Good morning, it's Tuesday the night and the question about the clip was who was having a shave? And it was Brian Brown who also co-starred with Tom Cruise and Cocktail. And he's in Break and Morant, which continues BBC One's season of movie classics tonight at 11.20pm. She knows everything, Kim Wilde, doesn't she? She's amazing. And I'll tell you what, she's had a couple of hits in the bargain. Yeah. It's true. Pop star, presenter, the whole deal. Uh, still to come on the show, Plant Doctor uh, meets Paula in day two of uh, solving things as far as the soil beds are concerned. And on the uh, beds with mattresses, uh, popping onto that will be Richard Bryars talking about Yay! Felicity Kendall's bottom. Ooh. But now at 8.40. It's time to go over to Peter Smith with the Big Breakfast News. It is. Peter, Pete, what's the biggest and most idiotic mistake you've ever made? <laughs> I once asked a painter who his uh, self-portrait was of. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Oh, good lad, Pete. I've admitted to his mistakes, as always. Nice and most of nice. Uh, and the question of the day is, in fact, that. What's the most idiotic mistake you've ever made? And Ian Morton from the Wirral says, the most idiotic thing I've ever done is I sat on my TV dinner. There you are. Oh. Maxine Merrill from Landudno uh, says here, the most idiotic thing I've ever done is I went to dog training classes, but guess what? Forgot the dog! <laughs> she yeah! forgot the dog! <laughs> she did! <laughs> she forgot! That's, isn't that funny? It's funny, isn't it? Oh, you're mad, you viewers. You kill us, don't they? Oh, you kill You make us laugh in the morning. <laughs> But it's supposed to be the other way around, isn't it? Anyway. Uh, 0819 double one double one or fax 0819 More of those. Mm, more of those. Now, I don't know what's going on next. Do you? No, I don't. Do you actually. think Paula Yates is doing something? Yeah, she definitely is. Yeah. Can we find out what it is? Yeah. Okay, here's Paula. If only this was our kitchen. Yeah. In our house. Yeah. And you wore that lipstick forever. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, the question about the clip is right now. Which Mancunian TV presenter is being impersonated? But remember, don't phone. It's, it's just, just for fun. Now, well, this is our kitchen. Can you leave, please? What's uh... I think having a strong Mancunian accent, uh, it helps people remember you, but it can hinder you, you know, getting over the first hurdle, because sometimes people just listen to the first few words you say, and then they just cut off. You know, they just think, oh, he's thick. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Teddy. Uh, welcome back to Big Breakfast. And the question about the clip was, which Mancunian TV presenter was being impersonated? And the answer is Teddy Christian. <laughs> Kim, there's another Oh, that's from the talking show featuring experts of elocution. It starts tonight on Channel 4 at 8pm. Sorry about that, Chris. Oh, and I can see that even in the dark in here. Mm. Now look, <laughs> as you can see, I'm inside this home yeast flotation tank. Costing just £5,000. It's easy to install. It produces an instant feeling of relaxation. The saline solution in here simulates the weightlessness of the womb. And uh, you can get stereos and funky lighting in here. And hey, Kim, you can also fit two people. <laughs> in fact, it's so relaxing in here. You really do come out feeling a different person. So, what do you think, guys? <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> it was a big joke. <laughs> and it took us ages to set up. And thanks to Vicky Michelle for being part of it. Yeah! Here's Paula now, outside in the frost with the plant doctor. We've got a little bit left still, haven't we? Oh, a ton of We've got two more phone calls and factors to read out. Today's question of the day, the most idiotic thing you've ever done. Thanks, Ted. 
Nicholas Smith from Stone Bream in Derbyshire, the most idiotic thing I ever did was go up to a bald man and without looking, asked him, could I borrow a comb? Oh. <laughs> and Jill, Jill Smith from Harwich says, the most idiotic thing I've done at my first dri driving lesson at my first driving lesson, I threw my keys out the window and I tried to put a cigarette in the ignition. Yes, yes. Oh. yes. put it all down to nerves. That's the end of today's question of the day, and there'll be another one tomorrow. Uh, thanks to all our inventors today on Invention hey. Corner, to uh, Mr. What's his name? Colonel, what? Colonel Mustard. Mustard. Colonel Mustard there. And uh, Paul, what are you doing tomorrow? Tomorrow we're going to be doing hanging baskets together, aren't That's we? Right. As you just said. And I've got a special mystery, exciting guest. Okay. And we're going to find out how to turn a dead person into a mummy. That's all tomorrow. Don't miss Wednesday's big breakfast. Bye bye. Bye. Yay.